All right, so today I want to introduce you to a new possible way to figure out if your ball python is a male or a female. And I would say pretty much the traditional way, especially for old time breeders, old time snake keepers, essentially what they do is they pretty much right at the base of the tail right here on Bobby, you can see there's like a little pocket right here on the end of the tail. And, and a lot of people what they'll do is they'll actually push out the hemipenes and there's two little hemipenes that stick out. If it's a male, if it's a female, you don't get the hemipenes popping out and I've actually talked to my vet about popping hemipenes and she said you really shouldn't do it that way because if it's a female you actually won't pop anything out and you keep pressing harder and harder you can potentially damage the snake if you really don't know what you're doing so pretty much what I've always done is I've used a probe kit and a probe kit is a metal probe that you stick into the tail pocket and it works really well and I think it actually works a little bit better than actually popping out the hemipenes especially if you have a female because you don't really pop anything out you're, you keep thinking all right am I doing this right or is this really a female as a matter of fact at the last show I had someone come up to my table and say hey I, I, I want to buy this snake from the table right next to you but I don't really know if for sure 100% if this is a female or if we're just not getting it right if we're not popping out the hemipenes and luckily I brought my probe kit and pulled it out and sure enough that it was a female and then someone underneath one of my videos in the comment section they said hey I wonder if you can actually use an ultrasound to determine the males from the females I thought well that's kind of an interesting way I've never actually tried it I actually do have an ultrasound so I thought today I'd kind of bring you along for the ride pull out the old ultrasound and maybe we'll take a look at Bobby's tail here maybe do an ultrasound of his tail and see if we can figure out if he is a male or a female all right, so this is my ultrasound. I actually bought it about five or six years ago. When I first started in ball pythons, it is a really handy unit. These are, this is like a little mini laptop version of an ultrasound. And the first thing you really need is you need transmission gel. I was looking through this and I'm almost out of gel. I just have a little bit here. If, if you don't have gel between the probe and the snake, you really won't see anything. I definitely need to make an order of gel because I use this for my breeding females to look at the eggs developing inside of the female ball pythons. That's what I usually use it for. And in this case, I want to use it to kind of take a look into Bobby. We know he's a male, but it'll be interesting to see if we can see the two hemipenes in his tail pocket. And essentially what it is, it is like a little mini laptop, super small, cute little laptop. It's nothing really fancy. It looks, I'd say it looks kind of cheap, but believe it or not, this was like a thousand dollars and it looks like an old laptop you know from the early 80s or something but it is a really high-tech piece of equipment pretty awesome has a lot of functions I don't really use hardly any functions on this the only thing I do is is you can actually freeze the frame and then you can you know measure the follicle size it has a measure where you can measure things in millimeters which is pretty cool and then it has I kind of messed up when I bought this ultrasound that it actually came with a cord from like the UK kind of one of the weird cords that's weird over here in the United States so I actually have to have an adapter to plug it into the the wall socket over here in the US of A and then I have a probe as a matter of fact a lot of these come with a convex probe which is like a round probe and you definitely need the flat probe if you're gonna use it for snakes or ball pythons you really really can't get enough body contact with the, the circular probe as far as what we're doing here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in and get it all set up and we'll do an ultrasound of Bobby. All right, so I have Bobby here in a tub and I'm gonna to try to see if I can do this. I don't even know if it's actually gonna work. It should be pretty interesting to see and hopefully Bobby won't run away. It looks like he's getting out of the tub. I don't know where he's going. I don't know if he knows where he's going, but if they start running, that is usually the hardest part. So what I'm gonna do is take a look at the screen here. This is where the ultrasound is right in the middle. And if you see, putting my finger on here, it absolutely does not work without gel, not at all. So you see, I'll actually get a signal as soon as I put gel right on here. It's kind of interesting. 
you can see it kind of form right across. What I like to do is I like to put a pretty decent layer of gel right on the probe, pretty thick, and I kind of slop it right on the snake. Now let's see if we can actually do this with Bobby and his tail. I don't know if we'll actually be able to see any hemipedes or not. <laughs> you might start running. What I might have to do is actually put something else on top of this tub to kind of trap them in here. We'll see if this actually works here. And, uh, <laughs> Bobby, where are you going? Come on, boy. All right, I made a mess all over here. Let's see what we can see. Uh, <laughs> he's thinking about it. Boy. There's not a whole lot to work with here. And Bobby's running away. All right, <laughs> this is the hard part with ultrasound if the snake starts running, especially if they really, really start running, it gets really crazy. But I'm not really seeing quite uh, anything on here, which is interesting. I wonder if I could do it from the top, maybe that would be better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to leave Bobby's tail here. Uh, let's see, I'm going to have to do this a little bit different. Bobby's like going crazy. All right, let me get us something to cover her, his tub. All right, so now I have a tub on a tub. Maybe this will actually work. I'm going to have to use some more gel and see if I can actually do this. Doesn't From the first shot, it didn't really look like I had very good success with seeing really anything in there. But we'll take a look here. They should be up in this pocket right here. And I'm really not seeing anything. Let's see if we can do it from the top here. Or maybe the side. Wow. Well, maybe. It is really hard to tell. Oh. <laughs> the hard part is actually interpreting the data on this. That is really the hard part. Seeing if you can actually see inside of the tail there. And you can almost see, oh, we're getting a little better now from the side here. It's kind of interesting. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I think you actually can. Right there, maybe. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe right there. Boy, it is hard to see. Oh, let's see if I can freeze it right here. Uh, let's see if I can find the freeze button. So I think maybe it's these two right here that is actually maybe the hemipenes. So here's a better close-up of the screen, and if I was a betting man, I'd say it's these two long black things right in there. And what I might actually do is I might actually try to grab a female and see if I'm seeing the same thing with a female. That would be kind of interesting. All right, so I'm going to try this one more time, except this time I'm going to use a female and see if we can actually see anything in there as far as hemipenes <laughs> I would say I would say the from looking at Bobby with the with the ultrasound it's really extremely difficult and look at this girl she is like leave my tail alone she does not want to be messed with and that is the hard part usually if you're looking for eggs you can get them to stand still but especially with ultrasounds on the tail it looks like see if I can keep this girl from fall out of the tub here. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, uh, well, 
<laughs> she's not happy. I don't know. I kind of see the same little black lines. I'm not sure if this is actually working at all. I would say probably you can't do an ultrasound to figure out the males from the females. Yeah, you just, it's really hard because you're dealing with a squirrely snake that doesn't want to cooperate and you're trying to ultrasound the tail at the same time. So the hemipenes should be right in this pocket if you're going to see them right in here. The hard part is interpreting what you're seeing and a lot of times, especially if, you, if you've never done this before, especially on the tail, you might not actually know what you're seeing as far as the interpretation of it. But, uh, I don't know, it almost looks like on Bobby you can see a little bit more of those black lines, not really seeing them on this girl. But this is, I'd say it's extremely difficult. <laughs> Actually, look at this girl. Woo! <laughs> yeah, she is not happy. Alright, we'll, we'll call this a fail. <laughs> you definitely cannot do ultrasound to determine the males from the females. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And 2K Sensei asks, if I just bought my very first snake, do I need to quarantine that snake? And that is a very good question. I'd say if you don't have any other snakes in your house, you're bringing in your first snake, in most cases, you don't have to quarantine. But keep in mind, if you have other reptiles, maybe you have some lizards or something like that, and, and they can potentially pick up the same kind of diseases, like mites or respiratory infection, you may want to quarantine quarantine that snake, bringing it into your house. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.